Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play our Setra the Imperishable Mortal Empires campaign. Ooh, let me just get acquainted with myself. Oh, I hope you guys are having a good day. It might be Tuesday when you're watching this, um, as that will be the day that I uploaded it. If it's not Tuesday, then happy day, whatever day. Last episode... We built our army and we took on some orcs, and so now we're going to go try and take some lands. Just going to have a sip of water. I have a recording buddy today. I've got my cat sitting on the chair behind me. Just chilling. He's a good boy. He's a bit fat, so I kind of need to put him on a diet or something. Let me speed this up. Now, I still think that a change that Creative Assembly should input into the game is only showing turn ends for factions that kind of are important or near you. Right unlocked. So, yes, that's another thing that the Tomb Kings can do that I didn't mention last time, is there are rights. Um, oh, wow, we can get a Cask of Souls already. So, for 5,000 gold... We can perform the Great Incantation of Tahoth, and that gives us a Casket of Souls. And Casket of Souls is magical artillery. It's armoured, armour-piercing, and causes light of death. Um, causes fear, it's undead, it crumbles, covenant of power, greater increase to res uh, magic reserves. So I'm going to do it. And we're going to put the Casket of Souls in Cetra's army. So let's get rid of one unit of Skeleton Warriors. And get our Casket of Souls. Now that's going to be a fun unit to use. Ooh. Where's Zandri? Numas. Where is Zandri? Zandri's down here, isn't it? Where is it? Oh, it's up there. Alright, we should probably take Zandri first. Let's go stand in Kemri quick, because the Wood Elves are... Lord of the Glaive. Wood Elves and... Very interesting. We're going to do some diplomacy. I'm not going to talk to the Sentinels, because I'm going to destroy them. We're going to talk to the Rakaf dynasty. I don't want anything to do with it. Numas, I'm going to kill you eventually. Follows on the Gash. Um, I hate them because, uh, well, the Gash is a traitor to Cetra, so we're going to ignore him too. And I'm not going to talk to you because I want your land, so we haven't got many friends in the desert. Let's just say it's a not a very friendly place. It's full of dead, sandy corpses that are trying to kill you. So I hope you're having a good day, wherever you are. Today, it's been quite a busy day for me. On a Saturday, I'm still recording. When the, uh, It's not the Tuesday, it's a Saturday. Um, we went and viewed a house because we're going to start looking to buy our first house which is very exciting um, then we went and met up with an old friend slash mortgage broker just to talk about the house and catch up and stuff and now I'm here recording on my Saturday afternoon so it's been quite a busy day because the house viewing was half an hour drive away I'm not sure if I trust these people. Highborn. Um. Glade Lord. The deep wood protects his sons and daughters. Take care for you. Yeah. They won't attack me. If they do, that would be a very interesting. Oh, that's a horrible way to go around. I'm going to go around this way. Now. 
garrisons for uh, Tomb King's armies aren't great. And again, we can only have one army, so early on we're quite vulnerable. But as soon as we start to pick up speed and get the ball rolling, we should be okay. So when I was a kid, um, I, let's preface this with, as many of you know, you guys know if you've watched my videos before, I do Warhammer and I paint Warhammer and I can actually take commissions. So if anyone's ever interested in getting an army of Warhammer or an, any kind of wargaming model, it could be anything, it could even board games, um, just let me know. There's a link down below. You can see my Instagram where I show all my commission painting and stuff if you're interested. And just send me a message. But um, I collect Warhammer. I've been painting Warhammer. It's what got me into this um, game, for instance. Um, and my girlfriend, really lovely and sweet of her. I've been hating work recently. So she bought me some Warhammer, and when I was a kid, the thing that actually got me into Warhammer was the Lord of the Rings. So they had this, I think it was called Battle for Middle Earth. It was a magazine where it, it had Warhammer come with it. And I remember going to W.H. Smith, and the first issue had like 12 Moria goblins. Um... This was when Fellowship of the Ring was the only Lord of the Rings film out. And it was for like £4 for like 12 Moria Goblins. So I bought like three copies. And I had no money when I was like, I was in year six. So I was what? Nine? Ten? I think I was ten. No, I was nine. Yeah. Um. Oh god. So I spent all my pocket money on all of these Moro Goblins. I had a hundred, like God knows how many Moro Goblins. Um, but my dad subscribed me to the magazine and I got every single copy. And I got so much Lord of the Rings Warhammer. And I eventually branched out into fantasy. Look at all those zombies. This is interesting. Am I not at war with you? Let's save. <laughs> Panic save, XCOM 2 style. Um, yeah, so my girlfriend bought me some Lord of the Rings Warhammer. And I haven't had Lord of the Rings Warhammer since I was that kid 10 years ago, right? Oh, that's, this is easy. I don't know what these are. I must have had a mod. It's mine now. <laughs> He's like, shit, we left for a minute. <laughs> Look, they're getting attrition now because they haven't got any province. All those zombies. Who's the fool? You call me a fool. You left your home. Let's just boost that up. So yeah, I was having a crap time at work. Um... So she bought me some Lord of the Rings Warhammer, and it's brand new Lord of the Rings Warhammer. Like Games Workshop used to like stopped doing Lord of the Rings Warhammer for ye decades, right? Um, they did the Hobbit for a little bit, but it was never a really well-off category for them because obviously the license costs money to get in the first place, so it was always really expensive. But she bought me this new Gandalf, the White, and Peregrine Took uh, minis, and they are beautiful. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. Like, they look so good. Um, I think... Uh, I'm going to... Mm, I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to start hoarding these canopic jars. So, the best way to get canopic jars, in my opinion, is to set this up on all of your lords. So you get three a turn. And that does really stack up with the more lords you have. So that's a good little hint. Because I can't get anything in my Canopa Jars yet. I'm getting I'm making I'm making none at the moment, so. Uh that would be good. Public order. 
melee defense, casualty replenishment rate, construction. Let's go with that. And when we started going out, she'd never watched Lord of the Rings before. So I thought uh, now's the perfect time to get her into it. So we watched, we started with The Hobbit, actually. Um, many people hate it. I like them for what they are. I think they're really charming little films in their own right. I mean, The Hobbit was always more of a kid's book. Um, people say it stretches out too long and the last movie is just a bit the last movie is just a, a massive fight scene, it is a bit uh, but the second film is really good so we watched those and she loved them and we watched Lord of the Rings and I showed her the extended versions but we kind of like oh I'm going to fight this I'm absolutely going to fight this we um we did it in halves because obviously the extended versions are quite long and she loved them and <laughs> the thing that sticks with me the most about it oh look at that it's a choke point as well the thing that sticks out to me the most is that she was like i get so many references now <laughs> like one of my favorite quotes oh there's so many good quotes though but one of my favorite quotes from lord of the rings is boil and mash him stick him in a stew <laughs> but obviously there's all the quotes like um precious and things like that and she you know like when something's so ingrained in the pop culture and society as a whole and you you just don't understand it because you've never watched the source material look at that look at that beautiful um you just don't understand but now she's watched it it makes a whole lot more sense so let's have a look right let's i'm not gonna gamble look these maps for the tomb kings are beautiful Look at that. So cool. Obviously the sea. Look at that. So we're fighting some um, undead. They mostly have zombies. They have these things. Like undead Bretonian skeletons. These are modded in. These aren't base game. And lots of undead peasant zombies. Look. I do like making the zombies a bit more varied because the standard zombies are just lame. Because not all zombies look like that, right? They have clothes and hats, and they look some are more decrepit than others, and and they're led by this guy. He's a ghoul. Interesting. But luckily, it's a choke point. They have no chance of winning. So what all I'm going to do, I'm just going to wall my men up in a big clump like this. And stick them on guard mode. I'm going to stick my war sphinx in there. I'm going to stick Cetra in there. I'm going to put my priest over here. I'm going to put my archers like here. So they can pepper them when they come. My casket of souls. I'm going to stick like here. I'll have the chariots protect it in case, God knows, something manages to get around. But we haven't actually looked at the casket of souls yet. So let's have a look. There he is. It's basically the, um, the Ark of the Covenant from Indiana Jones. Let's not lie. So it opens up and the soul comes out and it basically just destroys enemies. It's a really cool unit. Look at that scarab beetle just walking around. All right. Stick Cetra in the front. Now they're attacking me, so they should come to me. We're just going to watch this. Oops. There you go. Ooh. Boom. Am I still attached to this guy? God knows what's happening. There you go.
Oh. All right, we're not going to aim for the zombies. Because let's be honest, zombies are crap. They do look cool, though. Just the more damage we can do, the better. Oh, they do have some warhounds. And dead dire wolves or something. Ooh, that was a good hit. Where's my... So my priest hasn't got a lot at the moment. He's got spirit leech, which is good against enemies, but... Uh, enemy lords and stuff, but... Oh, my arch is just killing the dire wolves. Victory is already in my grasp. So we're just holding them off in this choke point. We're going to outlast them. The Cameron Moor Sphinx is going to do a number on everyone. Unfortunately, we don't have any, like, blast... area of effect kind of thing, but... Ooh. Oh, I thought that was my unit, but someone just broke a pot. <laughs> Alright, here they come. Let's get the War Sphinx into the clump of zombies. Look at that. Get a counter charge on. And let's get... The Strigoi Ghoul King guys come in. Get my Lich Priest to put a spell off. Did he do it? He did. Let's do a blast. Boom. See? Get some out of tough situations, that. Put our spearmen there. Now, chariots could obviously be useful in this, but I can't get them around and around the back, so we're just going to ignore them for now. Let them sit this one out. Now, let's just do that. Ooh, that was a bit of friendly fire damage, but... The War Sphinx has managed to get around the back. I only had some kind of magic to penendral but is it penen i forgot what it's called penembral pendulum i think look at them dancing oh god the frame rate <laughs> there's a lot of bodies oh the tomb guard with halberds are in Cetra's up there, look. Let's do a blast on him. That'll look cool. Boom! They're crumbling. So, when vampire counts and undead lose morale... They crumble. That means they just start losing health and then they just all oh, just completely go. That means their binding that keeps them to this world is failing. Um, so with the Tomb Kings and Undead, if we kill their leader, it severely damages their unbinding because it's the leader that's actually keeping them in this world through magic. 
Let's get the Necrosphinx to fight this leader. He's coming to eat you. Bonk. Alright, well... Not quite what I... <laughs> Where are you going? Where's Cetra? Let's get these guys a bit of a buff. You're not really helping kill the leader, so... <laughs> you could just walk through enemy lines, I love it. Go on, charge. I love it when you charge. Oh, yeah. Do another boom. There you go. See, look, they're all falling over. And the leader's about to go. Because they're binding and the morale's gone. There you go. Brilliant. There goes the Strigoi's Empire. Wow, 422 kills with the Casket Souls. Cetra killed 160. Well, that was the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back on the next one.